the big ass world of science, where the human mind strives to conquer the realm of the unknown. Here, human achievement turns fantasy into reality, fiction into fact, milk into cheese, and cheese into cash. We push the envelope to the edge of human understanding with an urgency that is the earmark of the scientific method. We waste no time and go now to New University, where brilliant polyphysicists and amateur bowlers ask, How big is too big? Imagine a bowling ball bigger than a giant grid in space. Using this model with a value offset at zero degrees Melvin at sea level, compensating for the Earth's rotation centrifugal force with a time to distance ratio factor calculated by finding the square root of the total water displacement, the mass events under nominal conditions with an inherent inertia factor of 9 to the hydrodynamic 10 divided by 12, compensating for wind variables with the height of the cloud. Let's apply what we've learned. Here we use time in a linear fashion. For zero on the too big scale, we pick the center. No, actually, we pick the lower corner. Yes, that's right. An object displaces a size. This is line S. On the bigness scale, we will have the bigness factor known as B. Now, if we examine the spot where B and S int- Oh, hang on, I've got to take this. Hello. I'm busy right- We did. When? Really? Look, I can't talk right now. I'm working. I'll call you back. Using similar scientific data, scientists also hope to discover how much is too much and when is never enough plenty. In the future, dogs will have evolved to become incredibly intelligent and will rival, if not surpass, the mind of man. Dogs of the future will be space explorers because of their ability to adapt. In the future, dogs on low gravity planets will grow to immense sizes but still eat cat food. In the end, future dogs will do the same duty they've always done, but in a new way. Amazing! Here at the Institute of Profitable Discoveries, using the first ever brand new state-of-the-art spanning proton microscope, uber nerds were able to isolate and miraculously photograph, for the first time, the building blocks of humor. Here are the first images of the funny gene. Still, other teams are delving deeper. In Switzerland, the world's largest super collider is searching for the theoretical funny atom. In a few moments, this accelerator, two times bigger than a giant grid in space, will launch a potential source of humor at a fixed target. Tremendous amounts of energy are released. One billionth of a second later, velocity disses gravity. Here, at the maximum moment of projectile velocity, it is theorized that at the subatomic level, unfunny and unfunny are forced to create the new and elusive humor atom. This energy, if proven, could develop a grand unifying theory that might explain the origins of the universe and why people snicker when they hear about black holes. Like Copernicus once said, science is the bomb. Game boys to pacemakers, life-saving drugs, and air travel are available only through science. And science saves your butt about a hundred times a day. We like the cartoons here. Good night.